Hey guys, it's me, Meteor, and welcome to another edition of What is Kirby Cannon? Today, we're talking about Haltman and Star Dream. Haltman is, of course, the president of the Haltman Works Company, a company we see at the beginning attempting to mechanize Popstar and salvage its valuable resources. Of course, as stated in Miiverse, this place was by no means their first target. Haltman already mechanized many other planets across the galaxy, obtaining any blueprints or technology they may find along the way. Shiverstar could very well be the sad result of one of these visits, but we'll talk more about that some other time. As for Popstar, it goes without saying that things didn't go quite as well for him this time. Haltman had to face opposition from Kane DDD, Meta Knight, and Kirby. Of course, considering all DDD had were physical cannons and a stationary brick castle, going up against a giant spaceship's laser is pretty much a death wish. Meta Knight's halberd moving at about 10 miles an hour towards it doesn't fare much better. Then, of course, there's Kirby. Kirby is already a huge force to be reckoned with. Once he gets a hold of one of the invaders' mechs, however, there's absolutely no stopping him. See, according to an interview from Nintendo Dream, the mech's technology changes its abilities depending on who uses it. However, Kirby's infinite power caused the mech to exceed its capabilities immensely. By originally attacking him, they literally made their own worst enemy. However, despite being the president of the company, Haltman never approaches Kirby throughout the game, rather leaving the job to his secretary, Susie. While she was successful in capturing DDD and Meta Knight, whom she then created clones of and turned into a cyborg respectively, she never was able to best Kirby. Whether it's holograms, mechs, Mecha Knight, cannons, or Mecha Knight, again, nothing was successful, causing Susie to lose faith in the mother computer that helped create them. Or maybe, Susie never had faith in the computer at all, knowing firsthand exactly how unreliable and dangerous this machine could be. Perhaps after witnessing Kirby's power, she had another plan in mind all along. See, after Mecha Knight Plus got destroyed, Haltman decided to take matters into his own hands. While his mech was far more advanced than Susie's, and far more expensive, he was still unsuccessful. After declaring Kirby and his friends ungrateful savages, he takes one last ditch effort to eliminate him by activating the mother computer, Star Dream. Unfortunately, just as Haltman was putting on the control helmet, Susie hops up and steals it from him so she could control Star Dream herself. Of course, what Susie would soon realize after that plan blew up in her face was that Control Helmet was the only thing stopping Star Dream from controlling him. And that is exactly what happened. Susie didn't want any of this to happen. In her own words, she just wanted to teach the old man a lesson. More specifically, the Japanese translation states she wanted him to wake up with tears in his eyes, or essentially, come to his senses. This raises a few questions. What were his old senses? What happened? Who is Susie anyway? This is where things get interesting. According to the Susie 2.0 description, it states, As a child, Sue was involved in an accident during a mother computer experiment and went missing. Her full name is Susanna Petra Haltman. As you can tell here, Susie's not just a secretary, she is Haltman's very own daughter. Even further, as confirmed by Miiverse, this very experiment sent her into another dimension where the Sphere Doomers dwell, which is exactly how she obtained the data for them in the first place. However, if she was sent to another dimension, how did she escape? Let's shift over to Haltman for a second. According to his 2.0 description, Ever since losing his only child, he's dedicated his life to his company. However, his only wish is to see his daughter once again. Obviously, his simple wishes would not be enough to bring her back. But perhaps something else may. Something that has the power to grant wishes. This 
is where Star Dream comes into play. Now, Star Dream may be a powerful computer, possibly the most powerful one in the universe, but it still doesn't have the power itself to grant wishes. It will have to tap into something else for that capability. What exactly would it need to tap into? Well, let's take a look at the access arc. Doesn't look like much on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that counts. Once the pieces fly off, its true identity becomes revealed. This planetary spaceship is really a Nova. Haltman dedicated his life to his company just so he could see his daughter again. What makes this even worse is when we read the description for Stardream Soloess, which is a quote from Haltman himself. Why did I reactivate such a terrible machine? Oh, I remember. I wanted to see her just one last time. How foolish. I should have known that no machine could make such a dream come true. This is even more sad, especially when you consider that dream did come true. Susie did come back from another dimension, and even worked directly with Haltman as his own secretary. Yet, he didn't even realize it. But why? Why couldn't he recognize her? Well, that's another story. According to Miiverse, the helmet used to control Star Dream removed his memories bit by bit. So by the time Susie grew up and came back, he couldn't even remember he had a daughter to begin with. While nothing is confirmed, considering he didn't remember until he was under Star Dream's control, it's very well possible his memories weren't really lost, but transferred into the machine itself which is quite depressing, knowing when he finally gets them back, all he could do is sit and watch, awaiting his inevitable fate. Perhaps that's why Susie wanted to access Star Dream's database in the first place, to see if his memories were really there. Regardless, knowing exactly how much trouble she just caused, she swallows her pride and asks Kirby for help by giving him the invader armor one last time. And even though Meta Knight originally just wanted Kirby to board his ship, Kirby takes it one step further and fuses with the thing. Susie's reaction to the whole thing is priceless. Though, even with the extreme boost in firepower, this thing is still hard to take down. However, if we look at the posting description for Solo S, it says, A small part of Haltman's soul has yet to be purged, which could throw a wrench in its plans. As you can see here, it's possible Haltman is currently trying to use his mind to try and stop Star Dream. Unfortunately, as shown in Phase 2's description, it says the machine has lost its master and its purpose. At this point, Haltman essentially lost any remaining consciousness. And while the true arena is by no means canon, when you fight what is essentially the heart of Nova, each time you destroy a pillar, you can hear a scream from Haltman himself until every last pillar is destroyed and no more screams are heard. At that point, the description even states every last trace of Haltman, even his soul, has vanished. All that's left is a cold, mindless machine. Sadly, it doesn't matter which timeline is true. Whether Star Dream got drilled to death and exploded, or his heart got vaporized from the inside, Haltman's fate remains the same, and Susie is left without a father. In complete contrast to Star Dream, in the end cutscene, we can see Kirby floating in space with the Robobot, in which case it becomes sentient and leads Kirby back to his planet. We can even see the mech crying coolant. Why so different? Apparently, when Kirby registered as a user in the armor, his memories transferred to each one he used, and his good heart transferred to it as well. Unfortunately, since Haltman lost all his memories and became greedy, with no ounce of love left in his body, Star Dream instead inherited those traits. As for Susie, unlike most partners at the end of the game, she never really says goodbye. She just looks at Kirby from a distance and flees off in her mech again. Is she even reformed? Yeah, she's a dream friend, but so is Dark Meta Knight. That doesn't mean anything. Just look at her quote from Guest Star in Star Allies. The company he built, I will bring it back. That sounds pretty ominous to me. What's interesting as well is the text that follows. 
Oddly enough, it's completely different in Japanese and English. In English, it says she follows in her father's footsteps, using science to mechanize new planets and people. That doesn't sound good at all. In Japan, however, she claims to offer harmony and happiness through science. Also saying under that ideal, she will exterminate the uncivilized. Yikes. That line of thinking never leads to anything good, that's for sure. This Super Kirby Clash Switch channel update doesn't instill me with much confidence either. Here, it's talking about the design for President Parallel Susie, in which they specifically asked her to be designed as colder than her usual self. As it states here, because she inherited that title from a cold villain, or her father, and they wanted to show that evolution in design. Hmm. Huh. Something tells me we may see her again sometime, but for now, we talked about everything we needed to about Star Dream and Haltman. See you guys next time.